The Discovery, Chapter 8, Part 3. No, 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 you... You mean to tell me, you mean, you mean, you mean to tell me that you went to school with Purple Smart before she, uh, got, got wings? David barely managed to say. Yeah, we, we went to school together. It, I didn't really talk to her all that much. No Pony did, but we all knew her. When she moved out to Ponyville, we kind of just all lost touch with her. Midnight replied. That's crazy. You, you're crazy, you silly, uh, silly little pwn. As David slammed down the last of his cider, he belched loudly, earning a cheer from some of the equally drunk patrons in the bar. All right, big guy, I think that's enough cider for one night. I'm cutting you off before something bad happens. Aww. David groaned, earning a chuckle from midnight. Haha, <laughs> got you to laugh. <laughs> You're cute when you laugh, or, or always, David said as his head spun. Midnight could barely hide the blush that immediately forced its way onto her face. Luckily, David was far too drunk to notice and continued to talk. Well, <gasps> a deal's there. What was it? Oh, a deal's a deal. Yeah, that's the one. Let's go dance until I puke, David said, rising from the booth before Midnight could respond. David, are you sure you might be a little too drunk? Midnight asked, suddenly concerned. Don't worry about me, small horsey. I can handle my liquor. David said in a bad Russian accent. Did... Did you just change your accents? And cider isn't liquor, what? David grabbed her by the hoof and pulled Midnight into the crowd of ponies. The world became a blurred mess of multicolored forms shaking and swaying wildly to the beat of the music. David was still easy to spot in the crowd, though. He towered over the ponies by several feet, and his drunken dancing was drawing a lot of attention. Ponies cheered and danced alongside him, twisting and turning, matching his moves as best as they could with double the legs and half the height. However, David had no idea what he was doing. He simply flailed his arms wildly, moved his legs enough to keep shuffling side to side, and swayed his hips to the beat of the music. In the drunken haze, he lost track of Midnight for a while, losing himself in the music and the positive feedback the ponies were finally giving him before he found her again. She danced her way over to him, weaving through the crowd until she was in front of David, then began to dance alongside him. I told you this would be fun! Midnight yelled, over the now deafeningly loud music. <laughs> you were right about that! David shouted back. They danced the night away. Lost in the moments, the whole bar seemed oblivious to the outside world and passing time. And before anyone could protest otherwise, the band was on their last song and the bar was closing for the night. It was still a work night, after all. David and Midnight found themselves some of the only beings still on the dance floor as the band began their last song. It was a slow, relaxing melody, designed to help every pony calm down for the night before they headed home and back to work. For Midnight and David, it was a slow dance. Neither knew how they ended up back together. Maybe it was just luck, or maybe it was fate that all the other ponies still on the dance floor had partners, except for David and Midnight. Standing on her hind legs, Midnight reached up and around David's back. He brought his arms down and around her shoulder and head as he held her close. They stepped side to side, simply content to hold each other and dance the last dance of the night. Midnight looked up at David, her sapphire eyes glistening in the warm light emanating from the ceiling lights. A stirring rose in David's chest, a feeling he did not quite understand how to confront, but it was there all the same. Before he could even process the feeling, Midnight spoke, forcing the feeling to flutter away. Pretty good night, huh, big guy? <laughs> Best night I've had in a while. David replied. As the song came to a close, David and Midnight separated and made their way out of the bar, making sure to thank the musicians on the way out. David stumbled out into the freezing street, waiting for Midnight before attempting to walk back. He didn't make it far before Midnight had to press her shoulder against his leg to help keep him upright. Eventually, they found a rhythm and walked back in a happy silence, both parties having nothing left to say after the best night either had in years. Midnight unlocked the front door and pushed it open with her magic while she helped David inside. Closing the door behind them, she helped David through the hallway and towards the guest room. 
Once inside, David flopped onto the bed. In just a few minutes, he was asleep. Midnight chuckled lightly at David snoring. Oh, David might look a little different, but he's the same as the pony in just about every other way. He's so damn cute. Midnight turned away and walked back up to her room to find her bed right where she left it. She hopped in and went to sleep. At least she tried. She tossed and turned for a while. Sleep eluded her, and no matter how hard she tried, she just couldn't seem to find it. The minutes slowly turned to hours as she rolled about, unable to find the sacred dreamscape. <sighs> Luna, damn it! why can't I just go to sleep? It's probably three in the morning for crying out loud. After another half an hour of tossing and turning, Midnight gave up and rose from her bed. She walked downstairs and into the kitchen. <sighs> Maybe some water will help. She brought out a glass and filled it with water. After a few gulps, she placed a glass in the sink and headed back for the stairs. She reached the bottom of the staircase before a sound caught her attention. A strange, almost grunting sound. What the hey is that? Midnight followed her ears and walked down the hall towards the guest room. Once at the door, she found the source of the noise. David was thrashing about in his sleep, tossing and turning every few seconds and grunting with effort, as if he was trying to run away from something. Oh no, he's having another nightmare. What do I do? Midnight thought to herself. As David continued to thrash about, Midnight tried to recall some way to help him. Waking him up would only solve the current problem, not deal with a long-term issue. There weren't any typical remedies that could deal with nightmares. And her magic wasn't able to work with dreams. Only Luna could do that. As her mind searched for the right answer, a thought finally emerged in her head. A memory of what her adoptive mother once said to her after she had a nightmare. In the past... Mommy! A young midnight called out. She rushed into her parents' room to find moonlight gently streaming in through the open window. A larger pony form hung from the ceiling by her tail. Her leathery wings were wrapped around her midsection and her amber eyes slowly opened. Hmm? Yes, dear? A soothing voice replied from above. Mommy, I... I saw the headless pony! He was gonna eat me! Oh dear, it sounds like you just had a nightmare. Here, I know the remedy. She said, as she dropped from the ceiling. She landed on the soft mattress below and patted the spot next to her, promoting Midnight to hop onto the bed with her. Now, the secret to beating nightmares is... Snuggling up with some pony you love. Her serene voice calmed Midnight's nerves slightly. R really Really, really. Come now, little one. I promise you won't have to worry about the headless pony anymore. Midnight closed the distance and hugged her adoptive mother. She was embraced by soft leathery wings and furry hooves. Warmth overtook her, and sleep came quickly. This time, without the nightmares. Back in the present... While it might not have been the most scientific technique, it was the only option Midnight could think of. Doing her best to push her doubt into the back of her mind, she walked towards David. <sighs> what if he wakes up? What if he gets angry? What if this is crossing the line with him and he'll want to move out after this? No! No, Luna entrusted me to help him deal with his nightmares, no matter what. Even if there's a chance that this could work, I have to try. Besides, I'll wake up before him and leave before he notices that I was even here. Easy peasy. I hope. Midnight hopped onto the bed, landing mere inches away from David. She hesitantly closed the last of the distance between them, careful not to wake him. She lay down on top of his arm and leaned onto his chest. Resting her head against his neck, she found the most comfortable position with a quick escape route, and relaxed her tense muscles. Midnight listened intently for any changes in David's breathing and for any sign of him waking up. Extraordinarily, he seemed to calm right down. All the fear and panic seemed to dissipate just by her proximity. Huh. Maybe this was a good idea. Oh, shit. Midnight's thoughts were cut off when David suddenly rolled over towards Midnight and wrapped his other arm around her chest. He pulled her in close and rested his chin on top of her head and breathed out a contented sigh. The only sound that filled the room was David's happy breathing. Midnight was too scared to move, let alone breathe. Oh, what have I gotten myself into? There's no way he's not going to notice now. 
me and my bright ideas. After a while of laying there, it became evidence that David wasn't going to release her anytime soon. And Midnight was far too afraid of waking him to attempt to move his arm off her body. Eventually, David's body warmth, steady breathing, and beating heart soothed Midnight's tired mind. Maybe I'll just... Midnight quickly drifted off, the sweet lullaby of David's heartbeat lulling her into the calm embrace of sleep. And I wonder what it'll be like to wake up, let alone who is going to wake up first. But can't wait to see what happens next. Anywho, let's get on to our Dancers of Donators. Top donators are 630, Only One Thing, Saru Orion, and Iron Sky. Darkseid, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moon, Heart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Two Hex, Sword Brother, Mordred, Omicron, Lyrae, Will, Chris, Twinkie, Riot Soul, Badass Waffle, Shadow Moon, Luigi88, Chancer Crust, Big Smoke369, and many more awesome people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.